Hello there and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name's Deepa Robbins from Designs by D and today I'm going to be showing you how I make my card envelopes for a few Father's Day cards. So here's the first one. Now, as you can see, this is a Father's Day card that I created earlier. There's a video for it. And the card envelopes are basically just something that tie in the actual card to the envelope. So they look like they go together. So those are the three I'll be doing today. Now, first of all, I want to show you the envelopes that I use. I use ready-made envelopes and I also custom make them to fit my cards. So I'll go with the ones that I have already. First of all, this one here is five and three quarters by eight and three quarters. Uh, it's Colombian white, 24 pound envelopes. And basically these are for my bigger cards. If they fit, they fit. And if they don't, I modify the envelope. And here are the smaller cards, four and three quarters by five and three quarters, Colombian white, 24 pound. And both of these I got off of Amazon and they weren't too expensive. You can probably look them up and even buy them in any store because they're pretty um, generic type envelopes. So these are the two that we have here, as you can see. That one's pretty huge. It's probably like half of the size of a paper, right? And there's your pretty standard envelope for an A2 size card. So those are the two envelopes that I use. And I'm gonna show you how I fit them to my, um, to my cards. So this one's your typical A2 size card. Um, I think it's four and a half by five and three eighths. And it is that size because I made it according to the stamp, background stamp. I don't normally make my cards that size. And here's my larger size card. I usually make my cards this big just because I like bigger cards. <laughs> so there's that card there. And it fits perfectly. These ones fit perfectly in the envelope sizes that I have. But now we'll take a look at this card here. And as you can see, it's not a standard size. It's like a square shape. So what I'm going to do is take my bigger envelope here and I'm going to end up putting this card inside and I'll cut off the edge here to make it fit as you can see. So I'll show you how I do that. First of all, what I'll do is I'll leave a bit of space and mark where I want that uh, edge cut off. So I've marked it with a ruler here and now I'm just going to take my paper trimmer and cut it a bit outside of that line, not on that line, but a bit further out, as you can see. So here I have a bit of a flap, an edge. And what I'm gonna do is just draw a line so that it matches on the left and right side, it matches sort of the pattern or the shape of the envelope. And I'm just gonna cut it out. Now this one sort of goes straight from the top down and has a bit of a little curve at the bottom there. So there I've cut it off and you can see that that's my edge. And I'm just going to score where I want to fold this with my scoring tool and a ruler. You don't really need a, because it's thin paper, you don't really need a scoring board. So here I'm just going to fold it in where it would fold in. <laughs> and I'll just um, crease that uh, fold with my scoring tool. And what I'm trying to show you here is that the edges here are a little different, as you can see. One's a bit wider than the other. That one's wider than this one here. But it's not a big deal because it's on the inside of the card and no one is ever really going to notice. So I'll just make the same kind of pattern, that like that curved shape that it has on the other side. And I'm going to cut that off now. So I'm going to cut off that shaped, sorry, that curved shaped edge along with that extra little flappy piece that's attached to the top flap that's going to fold down and like seal your card because we don't need that. So there, I'm just using scissors, nothing fancy. And there you go. So there you can see it's taking shape. Now all I really need to do is adhere it to that top flap that was already pretty much there. And so I'm gonna take some really strong tape just because I don't want it tearing open or opening up. And don't make this mistake, don't tape it down here. What you wanna do is tape it on the top right there because what you're going to do is fold it underneath that square flap and then stick it to the top of it so I'll, I'll take it off here and i'll fold that piece in underneath that top square flap like so and i haven't removed my release paper yet because i want to make sure that it folds nicely here 
And here's where I'll remove the release paper. And there I'll just attach it, add some pressure. And there you go, you have your custom made envelope. And I'll just show you here that it will end up fitting my oddly shaped card. So you just gotta loosen that up a little because it's not been used before. And it fits perfectly. So there you go. That's how I make my custom sizes because as I've said before, I don't really measure my cards. I just sort of make whatever size I kind of want and then I'll adjust my envelopes to fit. So I wanna show you how I design the envelopes. So what I'm gonna do is work on the bigger size card here. This one's about half the size of an eight and a half by 11 uh, inch pa page. And I'm taping off the area that I actually wanna add color to. I'll be using these distress inks, tumble glass, broken china, salty ocean, and stormy sky. And I'm just gonna use my blending tool to sort of lay it down. Now this is how I store them. My sponges at the bottom of my little ink cubes. It just works great, especially with these um, distress inks. They're just the perfect size for these. So here I'm just gonna speed up the video so that you can see how I lay down the color. And how I usually do this is I start with the lightest color and I'll lay it down in like various areas because I want it to have different colors, pops of colors here and there. And then I'll carry on upwards to the darkest color and then I'll eventually come back and blend the previous color in just to create a uniform blend so that it doesn't look too choppy. And then here you can see I'm adding the darkest color, the stormy sky. I think this is what gives it a lot of depth. The other three colors sort of blended into each other. And that's the final product that you end up with there. So yeah, you can see I'm using the other lighter colors to blend it in. So now I'm going to use this Alta New Simple Shapes um, stamp set. This is basically what I was showing you there, what I used for the card. And I'll be using my favorite, my favorite things, Black Licorice Hybrid ink. And I'm going to be using those triangles that I used on the card on the sides here of this envelope. So that's what's tying in the envelope to the card design. So that they look like they match and go together. And I'm just randomly stamping them all over the place. They don't, you don't have to fill the whole area because you've added color there, but it's just to tie in that triangle theme. So I've tied in the triangles and the blue colors. So I'll stamp it all over there. Now, because this is a bigger card, I like taking up a lot of the front and the flap if it was a smaller size card, like that A2 size one, I probably wouldn't add that extra edge that's on the front, that panel on the left. So here now I'm carefully removing my masking, pa uh, masking tape and there's my final product. Pretty cool, huh? And that's how it matches with the card. Now I'll move on to the next card. Uh, for this one, here's the smaller sized A2 card and I'm showing you that I've masked it off there. And I'm just gonna be adding this Concord and Ninth plaid background, which I've used before in previous videos for making this card. See, it's, I've actually used it on the front of this card and the inside. So once again, I'm continuing that pattern along the envelope so that it matches. Now, what I'm gonna do here is line this up in my Misty. And I'm showing you here that I did stamp this earlier using an acrylic block, a huge acrylic block, and it didn't come out that great. So I figured I'd line it up in my Misty here and add this scratch paper underneath the flap so that it doesn't get onto the rest of the envelope. And it took a lot of positioning. I've kind of edited it out here, but I'm gonna use the Faded Jeans Distress Oxide ink to lay that all over my stamp. And I'll use that Misty stamp positioner to make sure I get a uniform image. So here's a little trick I use. I use the towel to sort of um, add pressure to the top of that stamp positioner and it creates less friction than your hand would. So that's what it why it makes it a bit easier. And there you go, you have that nice um, gingham print printed on the flap of the envelope. Now I'm actually gonna use the uh, two lines that come with the stamp set with the same ink, the Faded Jeans Oxide ink to stamp these two lines at the bottom of the front of the card. I just felt it was a little too plain and I I'm known for that, I always wanna add extra. And then I'll also use the Salty Ocean Distress Ink to stamp another line just in the center. And just like random lines, just to sort of add a bit of interest to the front. Can't hurt, can it? And that's the final envelope that you get. Pretty cool. Now I'll move on to my last envelope, which is the one I modified. 
And I've masked that off again and added a scratch piece of scratch paper underneath the, um, the flap. It's gonna match that card there and I'm using the Alta New Pattern Play Circles. Now as you can see, that's what I used on the front of the card and I'm gonna be using these little circle elements to create a bit of a bubbly type image on the flap. These are the um, distressings that I'm using, Lucky Clover, Modlon, Pine Needles, Peel Paint, and Bundle Sage. And I'm just gonna randomly stamp these circles all over the place. Now I'm not gonna show you all of this because it took a while to rub the ink off of each of these and stamp and so on and so forth. But here's an idea of how it sort of came together. And as you can see, you get a really cool bubbly effect, just like the background that um, I used on the front of the card. And there's the flap. So I'm gonna peel off the masking tape, like so very carefully. And always peel it back on itself so you don't get any um, pulling of the paper or paper coming off. So uh, once again, I decided I need to do something on the front of the car, I'm sorry, on the front of the envelope. So I decided in the corner here, I'm gonna just do that same sort of bubbly background circle effect. And I did it in the exact same way I did the flap. So I'm just gonna speed through that here. And that's basically what I ended up with. And I'll just show you here. So there, I still have some room to add a name to the front or an address if you're sending it in the mail. Now here are those Concord and Ninth Bold and Brushy uppercase and lowercase stamp sets. I've been using these a lot lately. I just, I've just gotten them and they're just perfect for naming sentiments, everything. They're just the right size. I love them. And I'm gonna use this Versafine Deep Lagoon uh, ink. I'm using the Versafine because it is great at giving you such a crisp image. And now I wanna show you here how the acrylic blocks are great. Now look, I didn't get a full image, so I'll go back and place that right over the top and I get a perfect D stamp there. It's really simple to do that with these acrylic blocks. I love them. And so there I've stamped out Dad. And you can see that my A doesn't connect to my D, and I think I'm gonna show you that again later. Um, what you wanna do is sort of get that tail to overlap with the next D so that you don't see it. See, I'll do it, do it here, that A, I'm gonna get it to connect with the P, right? So I got good overlap, so it looks like one continuously written word. And as you can see here, there's the gap. And here you've got your continuous word. Now you might be wondering what Bapa means. It's actually in my background, what we use for, um, uh, for grandfather. So that's an envelope to my dad from me and my kids. So dad and grandfather. Now this one is to daddy and I'm making sure to connect all the little tails. And I also made it a bit funky. It wasn't completely in a straight line. And here's a little tip for you. This is the double stamp scrubber. It is really cool. It's nice and big, it's got a big area. And I tend to use it with this Ranger Bubblegum Water-Based Stamp Cleaner. It is really cool. I love the stamp cleaner because it smells so nice. Sometimes you use it just because you want to smell it. It's like perfume or something, but fruity, right? Because it has the bubble gum uh, smell. But anyways, what I do is, especially when I'm using a ton of little elements, uh, little stamps like this, I will wipe off the excess ink rub it down there with that uh, stamp cleaner on it and then I'll wipe off all the excess solution and there you go nice and clean so that's a little tip there when you're doing a lot of stamping with small images so this is the last envelope and I've stamped it in the exact same way I don't know if you can see but I have drawn lines on there in pencil to make sure that my stamping is pretty much straight not all over the place and as you can see here I'm sort of rubbing that out with my eraser just to make sure that I don't have any of that showing. And I also use some of these little hearts that were from the same stamp set. This is pretty cool. There are my envelopes. And that's pretty much what I've got for you today. So I hope you liked my video. And if you did, please like it with the thumbs up below and also subscribe to my channel if you get a chance. And um, there's also a couple links that I have here that you might want to take a look at. Um, they're how I created the actual Father's Day card. So you can see how this whole card came together. The card, the front, the inside, and the envelopes. And that's all I have for you. Guys, have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.